and they're, they're gone. It's almost over with now. But my father used to raise them, and then um, we would go decorate graves on Memorial Day. And my mother's grave was there, and my grandfather and grandmother, and then uh, my father had a sister who died maybe before she was one year old, maybe. So we would go decorate those graves and um, on Memorial Day. But peonies, beautiful. Now, uh, yesterday in Indianapolis in the South Park, we've, we've gone by this church before, and a pastor who's 29 years old, I don't recall his name, but... Um, he went there about 7 o'clock in the morning, and by the church is a, is a cemetery, a small cemetery, and they were going to clean in the cemetery and clean it up probably for, around Memorial Day. And a homeless woman, she didn't say why, she's 46 years old, and she shot and killed him about 7 o'clock in the morning. Wow. So today they canceled service, except I think they're having a memorial service today at 1045. So they've already started, and maybe that's pretty well through now. But we want to pray for his wife and one or two small children. Then we want to pray for North Korea and South Korea and the United States and, and more than all that. But I appreciate you praying for those. Now, today, um, eight signs of spiritual growth. And in your bulletin, my, you're probably tired just reading all of this. You'd be exhausted. You think this is going to last about three hours. No, it may be shorter than usual. Then that'll be fine. But um, eight signs of spiritual growth. Now take these questions very seriously. Okay? Now, do you remember planting your first garden? Yesterday, Jane and I, we went to visit somebody, some, a Chinese couple that lives about two blocks from us, because last Sunday on Mother's Day, they went to church with us. But we went to a Chinese church, that's a, it's a free Methodist church, but it's Chinese, and uh, they, I believe they speak um, Cantonese. Anybody here speak Chinese? Do you really? I should have. Oh my goodness, Lee. I should have brought something they gave me yesterday. Gave us. It was a letter. Why? They would. No, I don't know what it says. <laughs> so I can't say. But we asked them about going to church today. Oh, I'd like to bring them here. I didn't tell them we were going. We didn't tell. I didn't tell them we were going here. But um, they said no. We don't go to church tomorrow. We said 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. We pick you up at 10 o'clock and we get to the church again. And so they met other Chinese people and we had lunch together and it was Mother's Day and it was a great celebration. And Mrs. I don't know what their last name is. Ching, I think. Mrs. Ching, she received a gift. But they said no, they don't go to today. So we'll see. And they, they printed out in Chinese, Cantonese, I believe. Now, Mandarin is the other one, right? And uh, so there were some people there last week who could speak Mandarin. And so they had a great time visiting. So we want to pray for them as well. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for loving us. And uh, we pray for this couple. If they don't know Jesus, they soon will. And uh, Lord, we pray they'll even go back to worship. Uh, that someone will come and pick them up and take them to worship you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, I'm talking about a garden. Wow, we went to see them yesterday, and they use about every space in their yard for a garden. Not every space, but a lot of things, and they gave us some more food. They cut some things out of their garden and gave them to us, and maybe, um, I really like a garden. That's one thing of living in the city, you don't have enough room and so we put about three tomato plants out of the corner of the house and, and I found some seeds in the store to grow broom corn. Now I know some, I think the Kims have been to Paris, Illinois and there used to be a broom factory there because my father worked there and my brother and I worked there one summer and part of another and broom corn. I thought, oh they grew it maybe in Oklahoma or so, but I'm really anxious. I water that almost every day. I don't try to drown it, but I want to see it come up. And then... Um, 
some kind of corn, different colors of corn that you can use for decorations maybe in the fall time. And then something about lanterns, Chinese lanterns. I've never planted flowers like that, but I, we got a hold of some and we did. And uh, well, your first garden, you water and you weed. Oh, I can remember one garden when I looked out because we lived and across the street, my father had two more lots. And he had them in about 20 um, fruit trees and grape harbors and, oh, there were gooseberry. Ever eaten a gooseberry? I think I asked you that before. Oh, come on, that's my favorite pie. Probably because there's a lot of dough in it and the gooseberries are sour. Oh, they are so sour. And my grandmother used to put a lot of sugar on them. <laughs> That's probably why I liked it. <laughs> but anyway, grape harbors and gooseberries and different berry shrubs and about 20 trees, fruit trees, six cherry trees and a big garden. And one time I looked over there and the garden was flooded. It was like it was going to be a rice paddy. I thought, oh, this is going to be ruined. But because at the end of the, down there at the corner, there's a pipe that got clogged up. That it, it rained and rained and, and it clogged up and made it, just flooded the garden. But it went away and most of them were, it was good. Well, you remember. Oh, yeah, we got a couple of bell peppers. One is green and one's red. And we put them between two different shrubs and... And I hope they grow. I have a little bell pepper right now on one of them I saw yesterday. But I also saw that some bugs are getting in the leaves and beginning to eat them. Well, I don't know if you've ever grown asparagus. Ever grow asparagus? My father did. And I mean in the springtime, late spring, that would come up and you'd have to cut it off because if it got this high, it'd get too chalky. It's too hard, too tough, and you wouldn't like it. One of my favorite things, and if you haven't had lunch yet, I'm sorry, but is asparagus on toast. Boy, that is really good. Now, some people just hate that. They just hate it. But I like it. It's really good. Now, I think of squash and melons and corn and cucumbers and carrots and onions and Brussels sprouts and onions and bib lettuce and all this in the garden you can grow. Well, tending a garden, taking care of a garden is like growing spiritually, I think, because uh, you cannot measure spiritual growth. You know, I got this out, and uh, well, uh, what's your name, Cole? I don't know. Oh, I think it is. <laughs> but anyway, while, he's, uh, while he was leading the prayer service, I want to know how much this tape measure, and it said... West Germany, I don't know. I think I got it from my father, one of his things, and I like it because it'll come back up, you know. But, you know, you can't, you can't really measure somebody with a ruler, can you? You can't measure what kind of heart they have with a ruler, can you? I don't think so. Well, when I think about it, uh, sometimes we go forward and we come back. And we go for Chuck Swindoll, Charles Swindoll, I think he wrote a book, something like uh, Three Steps Forward and One Back. And Three Forward, maybe it's learning how to pay, uh, practicing on the piano. Hagen, as you teach students, sometimes they regress instead of progress or progress, right? Okay, now, in God's Word, there are certain indicators that is a checklist. And a, and a woman devised these eight things, and we're using them from Philippians 3, and the first one is this. You notice, uh, do I uh, have an increasing desire and determination to know God and in His Word? Well, do you long fervently for a close relationship with God? Because you see a sign sometimes that says, once in a while we see this sign that said, if you don't feel as close to God as you used to, you don't have to wonder who moved. God doesn't move on that deal. It's us, right? Now, 
daily prayer and studying his word. Now, we read from Philippians 3. Co led us in reading that. Now, look in verse 10. Philippians 3, 10. And, and uh, we'll look at a number of scriptures to help us, I believe. Philippians 3, 10. Um, now, I know in verse 8 it says, of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, that phrase. Now, look in verse 10. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Okay, we want to know Jesus and the power of Easter. Because every day, I mean, this is Resurrection Day, Sunday, but every day is Resurrection Day. He's risen from the dead. Now, it says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Like as we live for him, we become like him. Now, turn with me farther down to the right to 2 Timothy. Okay? 2 Timothy. Uh, we'll look at 2 Timothy. Um, chapter 2, verse 15. I want to read it. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. It says, do your best. See, Jesus doesn't ask us, just live life 25%. What good is that? Don't live life 50%. He said, do your best best. Say it with me. Do your best. That's what he said to do it. Now, he says this, do your best to present yourself as one to God, as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed. You know, when my father came home from the broom factory that day, I wanted him to be proud that I painted the foundation of the house certain color that he gave me to do. I wanted it done by the time he got home because I wanted him to approve that. Now I'll tell you one day we were out painting the gutters. Now I know you can get vinyl gutters now and you don't have to paint them always. It depends what they put up on the house. Okay? But we had like gray siding. A little darker. What color is this on the wall over here? What color is that? Somebody say, I don't know. I, I mean, I may be colorblind. I don't know. What is that? Light green? I don't know either. But anyway, it was a gray that was a little more than that. So we're up painting the gutters a deeper color than this brown. I mean, it's like maroon. Okay? And then I spilled the paint. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this is not latex paint indoors that you can just wipe off. It's oil-based paint. Oh my goodness, my father got upset. Because, see, I'm painting these gutters inside the gutter. Now I'm up on a ladder. I'm painting away and I'm making progress. And then I spill it on there. Oh, the lady next door, I always said, she came out and ran over and looked and, and wanted to know what happened after what he said. I won't tell you what he said. <laughs> oh, oh my. But we wanted approval. And it says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the word of truth. What's the word of truth? The Bible. That's the word, the written word. Now the living word is Jesus. But the written word is the Bible. Okay? Now, um, if you haven't read this book, here's a good one to read. I think it'll be a classic someday. It's not now. It's called Loving God. It's by Charles Colson. He died about a month ago or two or three weeks ago. He was called the hatchet man for President Nixon. Remember he resigned in about 1972? He's the guy that spent six months in prison. And while he, before he went, he became a Christian. 
There were people in prison, at least one person or more, who tried to kill him. But then he was released and he started prison fellowship ministries. And he has a, a program called, I think, is it, no, it's not Checkpoint. Maybe it is. But anyway, it's on the radio. But loving God. Wow. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Blackaby, Henry Blackaby and Claude King. They wrote a book called Experiencing God. So, you see, this is what Philippians 3.10 and 2 Timothy 2.15. Now, here's the first question for us. The spiritual growth sign. Do I have an increasing desire and determination to know God and His Word? That's my responsibility for me. That's your responsibility for you, to know God and His Word, to get to know Him. Because He allows us to do that. Can you imagine the Creator of the universe says, come and know me? Wow. I mean, that's really good. Now, the question number two. You'll notice this in the outline. Do I have a strong desire to separate myself from the things of this world? Spiritual growth involves separation. Some things we need to let go of. Some things that cause us downfall. That cause us uh, to stumble. Now, turn with me to 2 Corinthians. Now, go back to the left. You were down in, we were down in 2 Timothy. Uh, I don't want to insult your intelligence if I tell you where to go in the Bible. But in case you don't know, okay, that's why I'm saying that. Back to the left some, to 2 Corinthians. It's still in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. And I've got to get there too. Um, 2 Corinthians... Chapter 6, verse 17. It goes like this. And here's the question. Do I have a strong desire to separate myself from the things of the world? Okay. Here it is. Verse 17. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, we, Jesus, I believe, was in the Gospel of John. He said... You're in the world, but you're not to be of the world. That sounds like maybe gobbledygook or mixed up, but no, it isn't. Um, you see, we have to live in this world for a time, but this isn't our home. Um, we are sojourners. We are pilgrims. You know, we're just passing through here. See, I was born in a certain year. I didn't tell you what year, did I? <laughs> And now here we are, clear down to 2012. Now the pastor yesterday, he left his home. He went to the church to help clean up the cemetery. He'd taken a trip to Africa not long ago to help uh, people uh, age with AIDS, to help them. He came home. He left his home. He came to the church building, came in a church like this. And somebody shot him dead. It can happen to any of us. Because life is very short, isn't it? It's very brief. In fact, life is very brief at the longest, isn't it? Now, I had a grand... No, let's see. My great-grandfather. His, his first name was Gideon. His last name was Baumgardner. He lived to almost, almost his desire was to live to be 100 years old. And he lived to 99 years and 8 months. I wanted him to make it too when I heard the story, but he didn't make it. 99 years and 8 months. So there comes a time when this life is over with. And we're either going to be in the presence of Jesus or we go to hell forever. One of the two. Wow. Now, you see, we are travelers. We're really, we're traveling through this country and we're looking for a better country, aren't we? Oh, wow. I like this because uh, isn't that what that depicts or not? The mirror, the painting here? I mean, that's beautiful. I forget it's there and then I look at it once in a while. But anyway, um, 
the world must have no grip on us. Did you ever get the talons, is that what's called T-A-L-O-N-S, of a bird? Like a hawk? I had a fellow who had a pet hawk or more, and he had like a, an A-frame out here, about this high, and like this, to protect him, and then he had him, there's a stake there, or he had him so that he was, that was his home, and he had him staked there, and he, he chained. Well, as I recall it best, one day Doug got that hawk, and he took him out, and he brought him next close to me, and he put his talons around my wrist. Now, there's no way I could get him to release. I, I didn't know how to get him. That, that, that hawk had his talons. He had it around my wrist. Now, how could I get free from that? He knew how to relax the bird, and he released, and wow. See, um, you see, it must decrease the things, the desire for this world. Uh, the things, the desire, we need to desire the things of God more and more. So turn with me to 1 John. Way down toward the end of the Bible, what is it? 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and then Revelation. Good, okay. Now, go down to 1st John, and it goes like this. 1st John chapter 2. Verses... 15 through 17. Now it tells us what not to love. Okay? Do not love. Right? But it keeps on going. It, doesn't, it just doesn't say don't love, period. It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father, God, is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Wow. So here's the second question. Look at it in the bulletin there. Do I have a strong desire to separate myself from the things of this world? The third question. Do I have a growing faith? Turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 17. What is it? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in the New Testament, Acts, Romans. Okay. Romans 1, 17. It goes like this. Romans 1, 17. For in the gospel. Now what's the gospel? The gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ. That's a gospel. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. But just as it is written, the righteous will live by doubts. No, the righteous will live by faith. Okay. Do you find it increasingly easier to stand on God's word? You stand on his word. Um, you see, the Bible, God's word, must be our final authority. It, it is more important than this book. Although this book uses some Bible verses in it. You know, the Bible is more important than this hymn book. This, the Bible, is the important deal. Now, when we say that, um, we read it and think upon it and memorize it. Uh, you see... Before, a problem would come and I'd focus on the problem. Now, what I want to do is that when a problem arises, I try to focus on what the answer is according to God's word. Okay? Now, Jane and I go to a store and we're picking out a chair. What's the Bible say about the color of the chair? It doesn't say anything about the color of the chair, right? He leaves that up to us, to Jane and myself, right? Now, if you're a smart husband, Jane, dear, what do you want? <laughs> okay, now, do I have a growing faith? That's it. The just shall live by faith. Now, a fourth question you have right there. Do I find it easier to forgive? Turn with me to Luke chapter 6. 
We're moving right along. You're hanging right in there. We appreciate it. Luke chapter 6. And um, we find this. In Luke 6 verse 37. I find it hard not just to read the whole thing. So I'll read all the verse. Do not judge and you'll not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Here we go. Forgive and what? You'll be forgiven. Okay. Now, see, it's not only forgiving those who have offended me. And that can be, you see, we don't have the power to do that. We have to have God's power to help us to forgive somebody. Because sometimes people do awful things. And they do awful things to you or me, or we may have done it to them. So we, we have to forgive others, but it takes His grace. It, we can't do that in ourselves. But we also need to forgive ourselves. Okay. Um, you know, when we forgive others, sometimes somebody is walking down the street toward us, and we think and a red flag goes up. Oh, I remember what they did to me. I know what they said about me. I know what they did. I know what they told others. But God, we must allow God to help us to forgive. I think of Corey Ten Boom. Have you ever read about Corey? I think I asked you that before. But Corey Ten Boom and her sister Betsy, they put them in the prison. And uh, somehow in their dreams, in their prayers, God told them that both of them would be freed before Christmas time that year. Well, Betsy died before Christmas and she was freed. She went straight to heaven, I believe, as a Christian. Now, Corey, her sister, was still there in the lice and the filth and the, all the brutality they were treated by the, by the prison guards. But they released them before Christmas. And she was free to go. One day, one of the guards, after she was freed, one of the guards came walking. They were out in a shopping area or someplace, and the guard was walking on the same street as she, coming toward her. Oh. The hatred, probably. And the anger would well up within her. Well, turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Here's the verse that came to her that she had memorized. And um, it came to her. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. It goes like this. Now, the, now the, the, the prison guard is walking toward her. She's been released, but she remembers his brutality toward she and Betsy and all the other women in, the, in that particular prison. Here's what she said. Chapter 5 of Romans, verse 5. This is the verse that came. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. So the love of God helped her to be able to speak to him and go on. Because her own deal would be hatred, terrible hatred for his brutality. But the love of God poured over her. And she thought of this verse and, and she was able to speak and share. You see... Um, God is faithful and ask him to bless others. Now here's a fifth question for you. It goes like this. Do I have a growing love for other people? You see, um, on our own I said we cannot. But turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, this is called the love chapter of the Bible, right? Have you ever heard it called that? The love chapter of the Bible. Now, in this chapter about love is the best definition of love I've ever found. 
particularly these verses. Begin at verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 where it says, in the New International Version, it says this way. Love is patient, love is kind. See that? 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. And it'll go through the very first part of verse 8. I'm going to read it. This is the best definition of love I've ever found. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And then in verse, the first three words of verse 8, love never fails. Say it with me. Love never fails. Well, we need to be more patient, more kind. You see, do I have a growing love for other people? Do I have that? Well, let's go ahead. We don't have time to read. You can read in 1 John 4 and 1 John 3, but let's go ahead to question 6. Do I have a heightened desire for the spiritual welfare of others? Do I care about each person that I meet? How much do I care about our neighbors? Hmm. Matthew 28. You can turn to it. It's the Great Commission. I pray that it's not the great omission for us, but Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. It goes like this. Then Jesus came to them and said, Matthew 28, 18. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, it was Dr. Bill Bright, and he's already gone to heaven. Dr. Bill and Vinette Bright. They started at the University of California in Los Angeles, UCLA. Across the street, they started a ministry called Campus Crusade for Christ International, and there are, it's at the University of Illinois, I'm sure it is. And it's in different countries now, but around the, our country and around the world. He used to say something like, um, if you're with someone three or more minutes, you need to say something about Jesus or get it into the conversation. I heard a Bill Bump, that's his name, Bill Bump. I thought my name, Stotts, was hard to deal with, but Bill Bump. <laughs> he wouldn't mind if we made fun of his name. He said, you're, if you're with somebody about 15 minutes, you ought to get into more of a spiritual conversation. Wow. That's something to think about. Um, see, um, what would be for each of us in the year of 2012? We have about more than half the year to go yet as God, as the Lord tarries and if he gives us time to live through December 31st. Wouldn't it be great if every one of us could lead one or more people to Jesus? At least one person, if that would be our goal. And I challenge you today to set it as your goal that you want to reach at least one person, whether they're in South Korea, America, or where, to reach one person for Jesus. I'm speaking to myself first. Okay, now, here comes a um, seventh question. Do I have a greater awareness of sin? Do I have a greater awareness of sin? To be more sensitive to sin in my life. Um, to grieve over the seriousness of, uh, of sin and the offensiveness that it is to God. And to hate sin, but to love the sinner. Okay. Now, you see the verses there. You can look up in the relationship to that. Here comes the last one. Do I have a greater willingness to obey God in all things? To obey God in all things. In other words, to have a, make it a joy rather than a duty. A duty is like you come out here to a stop sign and you come up to it and you're to stop. But to serve the Lord should be a joy, not a duty. 
but a joy. Well, here's what we'll challenge you. Here, you, you can see it in the bulletin here. I challenge you, don't expect to grow up spiritually overnight. It takes a while. But begin. Does it give us an excuse not to begin? Do expect to and plan on growing spiritually. You grow physically, you grow emotionally, mentally, but grow spiritually. Realize that like physical and emotional growth, spiritual growth is sometimes painful. Wow. Wow, because God may point it out to me, some, you're doing something that's wrong. Don't do it anymore. Wow, maybe I like to do it, but we shouldn't do it. Okay, be encouraged and allow God to help you grow spiritually. And then choose one of the eight signs of spiritual growth and allow God to build this sign in you this week. Amen. Just uh, even all eight of them, but one of them, work on them. Let's pray. Lord. Thank you for this time together, and we just help us to serve you completely. Lord, help us to have the sign, these eight signs at work in us, building in us. Lord, do your work in us. Equip us. Help us to be about your business. We pray in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.